On this episode of The Sauce, I teach you how to weather a space marine. Or anything. Literally anything. Eh, ne, thing. Anything. 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 What's up, Internet Land, and welcome to this week's episode of The Sauce. If you guys like this content and want to see more, I'm live every weekday morning at 6 a.m. Mountain Time on Twitch. You can also swing over to my Instagram for tons of updates all the time. Today, we're going to talk about a video that gets requested a lot. A lot. Like, all the time. A lot. So today we're gonna to talk about how I weather models while keeping it to a very narrow focus to just learn the basics and the intros to these techniques. These techniques are really focused on time efficiency as a number one priority while still maintaining a pretty high quality output. These are really just my opinions on the current painting meta and a 101 crash course on weathering. Today we're painting a black model while using a colored highlight to be able to explore some color theory inside of our weathering. Lately, I've been hitting my black armor or black armor panels or like shields or like fur, maybe not fur. I don't know, skip that. But lately I've been painting my black armor panels with pro acryl silver and then a top little highlight layer to shift the colors a little bit with contrast turquoise. In today's example, I ramped up the turquoise maybe a little too much. Little bit too much. But that's okay. Um, a later step that we use in enamel wash will really dull down the model a lot. So it's possible that even with the too much turquoise, this could still be pulled off as black. But for now, maybe go a little bit less. If you feel like you want a little bit too much turquoise, uh, sometimes you can just shoot a reverse into the highlight of black ink back up into the model to help really reintroduce some black shadows and hopefully pull that model back out of the giant turquoise mess that you just made. For me, I think it worked okay. We're gonna carry on and just see how it goes. Video's off to a great start, right? Come on, like this is classic sauce. Classic sauce episode already. With the base coats out of the way, let's start to discuss weathering. The goal of weathering is to create the aesthetic of a textured surface. This textured surface can exist for many reasons, including the environment, battle damage, general wear and tear, and a whole host of other stuff. In today's video, we're gonna focus on creating the illusion of texture by using paints. We're not gonna be using physical addition or reduction techniques, which we could potentially do in a future video. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what you guys think of the video. We'll see what you think. Weathering to me is a series of chips and a series of pits. And that's been the best way that I've figured out how to describe it on my Twitch streams in the morning to all my viewers. The trick to focusing on weathering in a way that also prioritizes output with speed is to focus on the chips as a highlight and the pits as a shade. This is mostly in part to the increasing difficulty of trying to apply a highlight to a shade at the size that we'll be weathering at. Introducing colors in your weathering is a great opportunity to introduce colors using color theory. Today we'll be focusing on a complementary color, but you can also use triadic or analog as colors. This is gonna allow you to add some primary colors or some other things just into the mix in a subtle way while still preserving your grim doinks. I can't stop saying grim doinks, by the way. Like I joke about that all the time on my stream. I cannot stop saying grim doinks. I cannot stop. Grim doinks, grim doinks, grim doinks. All right, is everybody pro now? You guys, you guys get this now, right? Are we good to move on? Let's move on. Let, let me show you guys how to prank grim doinks. Let me show you. Stay tuned. Come on, let's, let's do the grim doink thing. I prefer to start my weathering with a sponge. I think it's the best way to add random weathering as efficient as possible. When you're weathering with a sponge, remember to lay down your highlight before your shade. Today we're using Pro Acryl Silver as our chip color and Pro Acryl Mahogany as our pit color. In order to get started, we gotta load up some tweezers with some pluck foam. I prefer pluck foam for this. I think it's the, really a good foam and you should hopefully have some pluck foam around from your army cases, so easy to go. I also like reverse tweezers because they just, you know, you don't have to like hold it. it just it holds it, it's like, boop, 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 ready to go. Boop, 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 boop. Generally, when I'm doing these techniques, I always prefer a smaller sponge with a rougher edge. So load it on up with some silver, dab it off, 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 and uh, start slapping it all over the model. I can't believe I just did that. That's so bad, that's so Now that we have our chips down, it's time for the pits. Note that in today's example, I left a little bit of the silver in this sponge to mix with the mahogany. We're gonna do the pits in the exact same way that we did the chips, However, we're gonna be actually targeting the same zone as the chips. This is an effort to hopefully get some of your pit, 
your shade color inside of some of your highlight color. This will give the illusion that your pit has a bit of an edge highlight and should start to add some depth and texture to your model. Any of your pit color that ends up outside of your chip color is totally fine. This will just enhance the texture and add more variety on the surface. Generally speaking, with sponge weathering, less is more. Sometimes a lot can be more also. I mean, really, you can go crazy. Just do whatever makes you happy. Next, we're scoring big time hobby boy points and we're introducing even more pits with an additional color. We're coming up with Pro Acryl Burnt Orange. This time we're gonna be really specific and intentional with these pits and put them inside of some of our already existing pits and really anywhere else that we deem probably interesting. This is a great opportunity to introduce a complementary color to the model while again, preserving some of that grim dark nature. Adding this burnt orange is gonna really complement the turquoise. So we're gonna add it into our weathering and let it just live subtly mixed into the background. We're gonna be applying this paint with a bit of a stipple motion. We're gonna come in, dab it inside of some of our pits, and then we can come in with our fingers and wick it off. This is gonna add even more texture. It's just kind of a cheat code, really. I mean, you're kind of just like, you're adding texture and then you're dabbing off with your fingers. Dab it up, dab it up, dab it up. This, in my opinion, is some of the best ways to get some of the most efficient weathering down. If you guys are digging the hand brush technique and you guys wanna come in and do all of your highlighting and your scratching and your pit work all by brush instead of a sponge, power to you, mad respect. It takes a really long time, but it is a very impressive technique. If you guys wanna see more of that, Go check out my boy Calf Miniatures on Instagram. Awesome dude, has great tutorials all the time. I think he's the, one of the masters of this technique. You can learn a ton from just tuning into his page. Now that the armor's all chipped and pitted out, it's time to move on using the magic of YouTube to finish the rest of the details of this model. And it's done. Next, in an effort to add even more texture, some grime and uniformity, we move on to Twitch's favorite. It's grime time, baby. Ba -ba 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 I've never done that dance before, ever in my entire life. I'm gonna have to start doing that on Twitch now. Once, once the, once the words out, that's what I do. I shouldn't. Now I'm gonna have to do that every day on Twitch. I run a dedicated Masters G22 for all my enamel paints. If you want to learn more about that airbrush and check out my review of that $20 holla, the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend on an airbrush, check out my review below. Today we're using AK Interactive's original, that OG streaking grime. None of this new green trash going around. I don't know what's going on with their quality control team. AK Interactive is a giant, giant dumpster fire this year, but, or is it last year? Are they this year? What even is time anymore? Really, let's be let's be honest. Like, what what is it? What what year is it? Like, where do we even live anymore? Are we, are we did we already colonize Mars? I don't even, I don't even know anymore. If you're having a hard time sourcing the original streaking grime, MIG Ammo Streaking Grime seems to be internet approved. People are into it, they think it's almost an exact match, so if you're having a hard time sourcing the original Streaking Grime formula, which it's hard right now, I get it, it is hard. Um, don't hesitate to use the MIG Ammo. Everybody seems to be into it, so I've not personally used it, but based on some of the internet and some voices that I trust, I think you're gonna be okay, so MIG Ammo if you're having a hard time. After a good shaking, I load up my airbrush, put it straight in using a pipette, or as the Brits say, a pipette. Why do they, what even is a, a pipette? Oh, mate, are you using a pipette to fill up your airbrush? I might load up that airbrush, cover that bad boy that we just spent some time painting. Paint real brave, cover it entirely in enamels. Yeah, streaking grime, what a, what a freaking product, you know? What, completely not how it's intended to be used, but damn, does it work good like this. Next, you're gonna whip out your handy dandy white spirits. The last couple weeks, I've been using the Abtalung 502's odorless thinner. Is that what it's called? Absolute 502 odorless thinner. <laughs> I've been digging it. I like it a lot. I, I don't know. Use whatever thinner you want. I don't know. I, it's seriously. I I don't know. Dude, psh, pff, do whatever. <laughs> Using a Q-tip, I start to soak up a little bit of the streaking grime. And when I say a little bit, I guess I mean actually most of it. Yeah, it's it's most. It's, it's basically all of it. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. Yeah. You can leave it pretty intentionally. Um, one of the things that you can do with streaking grime while you're weathering is you can focus on leaving some of your deposits of streaking grime over some of your weathering that you did with a sponge or your brush or whatever. And this will help add a little bit of translucency to the streaking grime, allow some of those colors to pop through, help with some color transitions, general buildup and weathering and all sorts of stuff. Just get funky with it. Get, get, get funky. Get funky, dog. Get funky. Get funky, dog. What am I doing? What is this video? What is even happening? As always, the dry finish of the streaking grime is my favorite part. The, the uberly matte finish, the incredible dustiness, the way that it really just helps blend and pull all your colors back together. Whoo, whoo. Streaking grime is still OP. It's breaking the meta. It is OP as fuck. And that's really essentially the intro to weathering. There's additional techniques that can be worked into this. Things like edge highlighting, 
things like oils, things like dry pigments, things like even physical addition and reduction of the model. So adding texture, removing texture are all parts of weathering. All this we can explore in a further video. But for now, this ground foundation of weathering and how to make things look textured using paint specifically is a very important foundation that I get asked about a lot. I think the other techniques are essentially enhanced by some of the techniques that we covered here today. Some of the theories on how to apply pits and depths inside of the chips and the highlights really will help you understand weathering on the next level. Paint those eyes and let's party on Garth. And now with those eyes done, let's slap it on a simple base and here's some pictures of the final product. In the future, we'll probably come back and make some follow-up videos on some more advanced techniques. Things like how to use edge highlights to add texture and pop and even more depth to your model. There's tons of techniques you can do with weathering. This is really only the beginning. If you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends, and I'll see you guys next time on The Sauce. Peace!